there's a lot of difference in what we have the opportunity to grow here in New Zealand and we're just trying to be basically hops with a difference. Hi there, I'm Brent McGlashan from Mac Hops. Um, I'm a fifth generation hop farmer here in uh, Motawaika. been growing uh, hops in our family since the year 1900 and we have two farms. We have our home farm, our original farm, situated pretty much right in the heart of Motawaika and we have another one 15 minutes drive in the Mootry Valley. Growing 115 hectares of hops and we also have some a little bit of dry land farming as well too. Mac Hops came about because uh, we wanted to differentiate ourselves in, in the industry and have a bit of a name. And we asked the McCashin family because the McCashin family had Max Brewery and McGlashan and McCashin sounds very similar. We had to ask a couple of people and, and uh, we fell on Mac Hops because Mac being McGlashan, um, even though we're MC, not MAC. <laughs> So that's how we fell upon Mac Hops. And we've had the Mac Hops name for probably about 20 years now. And before that, it was just my granddad's name, B.H. McGlash. And then before that, it was my great granddad's name. And then before that, my great great granddad's name. So, yeah. So when hops start growing in springtime, it's normally around October, the shoots are flushed out of the ground and ready to be trained. We train them up strings. Vines will wind their way up the string. We give them a bit of a helping hand and we wind up to three shoots up the string and they'll climb within six to eight weeks, they'll climb five metres to get to the top of the, the structure and that's where they'll sort of bend over and they'll start growing out and as they grow out that's where the hops grow and they grow on the branches. And so it's a very vigorous growing plant, you don't want it to grow too fast, and you don't want to grow it too slow. So finding a middle ground and of course they take a lot of feeding when they grow that fast so we do use a reasonable amount of fertiliser to keep them growing and keep them healthy. During summertime from about middle of January onwards the cones or the burr starts to set which is like the fruit as such and then those cones fill out and become into what formed into the hop cone and then harvest time is normally around the sort of the end of February all through the whole of March and, and it's just go 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 when that happens. And our varieties are bred by plant and food and the, the way the crow flies are only about five kilometres from us here on our home farm so we're, we're growing in a similar environment to what where the, the breeders have been breeding from. Plant and food, very well known in the world of hop production, has been one of the best breeding organisations in, in world hops. So we're very, very lucky to have some great scientists and, and great people behind producing some of the best hops in the world. At harvest time, we've got vine pullers. They'll come into the paddock and they'll harvest the vines. They'll go into the machine and then through the machine, we're, we're picking the hops off. And then the rest of the process is just a big cleaning process to separate the hop cone from the leaf and stalk. Leaf and stalk all goes into compost eventually and the hop cones go up into the kilns. We kiln dry for anywhere from five hours to about nine hours depending on the variety. Then they're left to settle down for sort of a day and then they'll get baled into sort of oversized wool bales at about 120 to 140 kilograms. And from then on they'll go to New Zealand Hops, which is a grower own cooperative of about 27 growers and there it will be processed into a pallet and shipped anywhere from inside New Zealand all around Asia Pacific, around the rest of the world. 80% typically is exported and around 20% stays in the New Zealand borders. Hops have been through some pretty tough times over the many many years and over the years that our family have been in it, it's been sort of up and down like a roller coaster and it wasn't until the craft beer sort of phase boom came along sort of 2010 onwards where we saw a little bit more of a consistent supply of income which gave us the opportunity to then reinvest. I went to Lincoln University and studied a Bachelor of Agricultural Commerce there but still never knew that I wanted to come back home to the family farm. I went travelling for about five years and I would go overseas and then I'd come back for two or three months do the harvest and then eventually that got longer and longer and my brother-in-law Owen he came back on the farm as well too and that's when we did some pretty major changes and we did some big changes at a time when the hop industry was still in the doldrums so we took a bit of a gamble and uh, yeah now we're, we've gotten to a size that we can sustain sort of three four families you know we've, I've got two two brothers and one sister um, so there's four of us kids in the family and mum and dad of course still in the back doing the, the accounts and all the running around and behind us which is fantastic I guess it gets into your blood they say hops gets sort of 
stuck in there and, and you sort of can't shake it. So it just took me a wee while to realise that, yeah, this is what I do love doing. So I'm Brent McGlashan and I'm a fifth generation hop farmer.